-hmm. You've worked your way through the process of reloading all the way through except for one step. Save the best for last. It's time to seat the bullet. Guy Miner here from UltimateReloader.com. Seating the bullet is one of the most important steps and it's the last step. I say it's one of the most important primarily for accuracy and for creating a cartridge that will actually function properly through your firearm. So let's take a look at how to set up that seating die, how to operate the press to get a properly seated bullet, deciding what your seating depth is going to be. We're going to go into that and then we're going to ask a question about crimping. So. Let's get started. We're going to take our seating die, put it on in here. What I like to do is raise the ram completely before I get it very far in there, before I get the seating die in there very far. And then I screw the die down until it contacts that ram, the top of the ram. One of the tricks that I learned a long time ago was to use either factory loaded ammo or maybe a cartridge that you've already loaded in the past or maybe set up a dummy cartridge so that you have your length set. If you have that, that's great and that's one way that I like to go ahead and set up my die so that it will produce consistent quality ammunition the same size as my dummy round or my previously loaded round. So I'm going to run that on up in there. And then I'm going to screw the seater down until it's contacted the tip of the bullet, it's contacted the bullet and it won't go any deeper. Now, that's an actual loaded round that I loaded earlier. I'm going to go ahead and set up a dummy round. One of the things I like to do, a dummy round has no primer, no powder, and I like to very distinctly mark it with a Sharpie so that it doesn't go elk hunting with me because I've got to put that in my rifle, point it at an elk and shoot, and nothing's going to happen except I'm going to get very frustrated. So we'll put the unprimed but sized cartridge in there, take our bullet, run it on up in, Check that out. Very nice. So we've got our dummy round and we want to do another check on this. We're going to take our calipers, measure our dummy round and see if it meets the specs in the loading manual. For the 308, loaded round, usually right around 2.8 inches is recommended. And this one is coming in at a rather nice 2.8. Now, 2.8 works great in my 308. It'll fit in the magazine. It'll function through it. That's the other thing I do with dummy rounds. Is sometimes I'll load up two or three of them, maybe four or five, and I will use them to function check my rifle if I'm going into uh, an important match or if I'm going on a hunting trip and I want to make sure that my rifle cycles properly when I'm out there in the field after my whatever I'm hunting. We've got it set there at, uh, at our depth. Uh, it's interesting, seating depth can affect pressures. And you see this more often in smaller cases where a small change in your seating depth can dramatically increase the pressures. Uh, that has been shown in 9 millimeter pistol cases very often. A little bit short on that and uh, pressures can skyrocket. 308 is a little more forgiving, but it's also something to think. Every time you seat a little bit deeper, you're going to be using up some of that space inside the cartridge case and your pressures are going to go up. So let's load a few rounds. I've got here, I've got an old box of 150 grain Sierra Game Kings, which is what I'm loading this time. And also we wanted to show you, Sierra's got a new branding here. This is a set of their 175 grain hollow point boat tail match king bullets. Really good bullet and for 308 guys out there, uh, they carry very, very well at longer ranges. You get out there in that transonic area where they start slowing down about eight, 900 yards and the old 168s might do some strange and weird things to you like sort of skidding through the target sideways and things. The 175s are usually much, much better at that. But we're loading hunting ammo today. I'm take one last quick look here, make sure, yep, 
powder, powder, powder. Let's insert that right there. Take our bullet. We want to guide it up into the seating die. Nice and easy like that. No point in hurrying this. There it is, nicely seated. Seating it straight is probably the most important impact on accuracy. And although we're guiding it up in there ourselves, this is just a pair, a set of ordinary dies. They're good dies, they will produce good ammo, they always have. But if we're looking for that match quality ammo or we're looking to shoot long range hunting or something like that where extreme precision is needed, then we want to go ahead and invest in either some really good match type dies or refine our seating technique a little bit, play around with it a little. Uh, I like to just go ahead, if I'm shooting, shooting for match type accuracy, I just use match grade dies. Keeps that bullet seated straight, very little run out, and the less run out, the less skidding around that bullet does as it's entering into the, uh, the barrel, hitting those lands and grooves, hits those straight, continues on down the barrel straight, comes out the barrel straight, and heads straight to the bullseye. That's exactly what we're looking for. One step that can be added to this, it depends on your personal preferences and also depends on the cartridge you're using, is crimping. So let's take a look at crimping next. Okay, we don't need to decrimp our 308 Winchester stuff. I've set it all to the side and I've brought out some 3030 cartridge cases, which is a round that I like to crimp. Typically, I'll crimp my cartridges for lever action rifles like my 3030 and my 4570, and also my revolver cartridges 44 Magnum, 45 Colt, uh, 38 Special, 357 Magnum, all those benefit from a good crimp. So, what I do is I'll start with a 3030 cartridge. I've got a 3030 cedar die already in place, and I'm going to set that in there. Take my very traditional 170 grain round nose core locked bullet and uh, insert it there and seat. What we want to do on these bullets that are for the 3030 and for other cartridges that you would crimp, we want to find the crimping groove in that bullet and crimp right there. This is one of those cartridges that it's probably not going to cycle properly through your lever action if it's not very, very close to factory specs. I see that this one is just a, on the kind of the low end there of the crimp groove, and that'll work, but I would really like to seat it just a tiny bit deeper to get the end of the case mouth in the, even with the crimp groove that's in the bullet. And I need to grab a flathead screwdriver to make that happen. That looks like that ought to just about do it. Nice. What we're trying to do is get the line, the crimp groove or cannula in the bullet even with the uh, case mouth right here. And we have to do that by adjusting our seating depth. It looks like it's pretty good. I like to have that case mouth right in the middle of the cannula or crimping groove. Also, I'm separating the seating from the crimping, and I'm going to go ahead and seat several of these bullets, and then we'll crimp them in place. Okay, we've got them seated. Let's set up the crimp die. So I have found nothing better than the Lee factory crimp die for applying a crimp to the 30, 30, 45, 70 cartridges that I work with sometimes. And adjusting them properly to get that crimp in there is key to success. 
We're going to go ahead and run the cartridge case on up in there. The bullet and the case mouth actually come through, and this did not apply any crimp whatsoever because I don't have it adjusted down tight enough. So I'm going to loosen up a little bit on the lock ring, which is very nice. I can actually do that with my fingers on this. Tighten down the factory crimp die a little bit. Bring it on up. You're feeling, feeling this. You're doing it by feel. You'll feel it when you're making contact. I'm not there yet. Ah, starting. Let me take a look. Hardly even noticeable yet, but it'll get there with just a little bit more. This one you want to be careful because it's easy to overdo it. And the purpose for our crimping on this for the lever gun is you want to You've got a tubular magazine, and these cartridges are all going to be in there like this, and with the tip of one bullet resting against the base of the other, and these are safe to do it with. That's what they're made for. They're round nose soft point bullets. They'll do that just fine. And However, on recoil, they're going to want to go forward, and they can actually jump farther forward out of their cartridge cases a little bit. Same thing happens with powerful revolvers. Uh, you get If you haven't got enough of a crimp and enough uh, bullet neck tension, you're going to go ahead and get those bullets moving forward slightly and it'll tie up your revolver and it will cease functioning. Probably right when you need it to function. Ah, there we go. And we have a factory crimp. Nice. There we go. And we could go ahead and crimp them all. That's what I do. I do them in blocks of 50 and uh, just go ahead and I run through the whole loading process, seat them, and then go to another die, the fourth die for the, uh, for the crimping stage. Works great crimping when you've got a, uh, a turret press and you've just got one more station on there with your crimp die on it. But it works fine on a single stage too. You just have to remove the seating die and then add the crimp die. No problem. In this video, we've talked about seating the bullet, selecting the proper depth, seating it properly. We've talked about possible pressure problems. And uh, that's going to wrap up this particular video. But it's the last video in this basic rifle reloading series. So let's talk through just a little bit about the things we've talked about or the things we've covered in this series. And some important points I'd like to make before we, before we conclude is safety first. Be careful. Do your research. Do this stuff methodically. Plan it out ahead of time. If you run into trouble, stop. Maybe you're too tired. Maybe you're distracted with something. Stop. It'll wait. If you just stop, it's okay. And you can come back and take a look at it later and move on and correct whatever the issue was. Don't make it more complicated than necessary. You know from watching our videos here on Ultimate Reloader that you can get really into the weeds on reloading. We can measure everything. We can get very, very expensive equipment. We can use all top dollar stuff and we can get re we can make reloading very complicated um, and very, very detailed. To get started, you don't need to do that. You just need to follow the basic rules, do your research and make it happen. Enjoy the process. Reloading can turn into a little bit of drudgery. But honestly, I thoroughly enjoy the hobby of reloading, as do an awful lot of other reloaders. Enjoy the process. It's kind of cool. I, I build my own arrows for my bow. I make my own bow strings. I tie my own flies. And I load my own ammo. I like doing that. It's especially rewarding when you either shoot really well at a match with ammo you've created, or if you go hunting and do a wonderful job in hunting, make a great hit, take your animal down quickly. Um, with your own ammo. It's nice. Build useful ammunition. Some people build a little of this and a little of that and a little of the other and then they've got all this strange stuff sitting around they don't know what to do with. I mean they're going to shoot it, yes, but it's not particularly useful. If you're a deer hunter, load deer hunting ammo, okay? Take a look at some good soft points or some other kind of good, good uh, deer hunting bullet and load them up to the level you need to do the kind of hunting you want to do. If you're shooting for matches, 
start thinking about upgrading stuff, okay? Start thinking about some real nice fancy dyes, start thinking about things like that. You can do well with standard equipment, but maybe start setting a little bit of money aside for the better stuff. Take pride in your work. When you build good ammo, you should be proud of that. This is, this is an accomplishment. It's something you've done and you're doing it well. The more you reload uh, and start taking extra little steps and extra little precautions, you're going to be building some great ammunition. If you don't ever need to upgrade, that's fine. I've still got dyes that I bought decades ago that I'm still using. They're doing exactly what they're supposed to do. I'm very satisfied with the ammunition they're producing and I've never needed to upgrade those dyes or the press that I use them on. That's absolutely fine. If you're getting into match shooting or you want to get some kind of higher level of precision, it may be time to upgrade, but for many purposes you don't need to, you're just fine. What I want to know is what rifle cartridges are you loading for, what gear are you using to get there, and do you have any tips for beginning loaders that will help make that process of reloading cartridges go easier and help them produce better ammo? If you do, drop a comment and we'll have a discussion. That concludes this video and it's time to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content, and Instagram. Make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. If you're interested in custom rifles like what we build here on the channel or gunsmithing services, you're gonna to wanna to go to rifles.ultimatereloader.com and get on the wait list. If you're interested in becoming a professional gunsmith, check out the Sonoran Desert Institute. They've got a degree program, they've got a certificate program, and you can study from home. Learn more at sdi.edu. Thanks again for watching.